Thank you very much, Morgan. Um, hi, everybody, and uh, I hope you're having a good Wired day. Um, I'm just sorry I can't be there in person with you. Um, I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes, as, as Morgan has just outlined, to really um, ask or answer the question, how can we better steer health technology investment to deliver smart, intelligent health ecosystems of the future? Certainly, personally, for me, um, the future of healthcare, the operation of these smart health ecosystems is something I believe very passionately in. I do believe it's possible. So over the next 15 minutes, I, I'm just going to outline what we EY describe as uh, intelligent smart ecosystems. I'm then going to look at various studies that, that we have done over the last year. Uh, some of the data comes from our uh, Voices in Healthcare study that we did in January and February 2024, so not that old, just a few months ago. And then I'm going to move in to examine the, well, so what can we do about it, uh, rather than just sort of pose a, a, a load of sort of questions, challenges that we have. Uh, and so uh, I do hope it's going to be interesting. As uh, Morgan says, please do use the Slido to uh, ask questions as time at the end uh, for questions. So just really to, to recap for those of you who have heard me speak before, what do I actually mean by uh, an intelligent smart health, health ecosystem? I think we, you know, we've all moved from the analog uh, stage of healthcare where records were really paper. We're very much uh, moving through and or at the digitized um, uh, stage of healthcare, really like digital records, uh, but really the value proposition of each individual stakeholder is really standalone within that perimeter of that stakeholder environment. Some of us have moved or some stakeholders, some participants have moved to what we call connected and a connected health system really relies and is interdependent on one other stakeholder in the system. So as a mutual value proposition, shared investment data exchange outside a typical organization's own perimeter. And then that smart health ecosystem is, is, is really the connected care, I guess, on steroids, uh, interconnected collaborative ecosystems where, you know, AI really is commonplace. Uh, data is held at the edge, not in a centralized way. I actually think some of the work that the NHS is doing around federated data platform, FDP, is a real great precursor to help us get there. Um, and as I said, interdependent value propositions and risk and reward is shared. To bring that to life, though, let's just take a, a quick example, say respiratory. We used to have an inhaler, standalone a puff on it. Digitized would be that inhaler, but maybe a smartphone recording how many times, so passively recording how many times that puff was taking. Connected, I thought there was a great example of this a few years ago where an inhaler producer manufacturer teamed up with a weather station. So the weather station predicted when an asthma attack was likely to uh, happen. A, a great example of connected care. But truly smart, wouldn't this be great if you look at the disease itself, it's a neurological trigger which then causes inflammation, which then the, the chemical in the inhaler reduces. If we were able to stop that neurological trigger, maybe with a bioelectric sensor sensing even before the weather station, that would be truly smart and interoperable. And it would obviously require a different number of parties to participate. So that's really bringing it to life. Having said that, though, when we look at the analysis of who is doing what, either in the patient engagement area, the diagnostics area, health systems operations area, maybe more life sciences specific in, in uh, R&D, uh, uh, then we see a different picture. We see lots of stuff happening at the pilot or the deployed stage, and um, we're categorizing deployed versus mature as when it's in up to five countries. Quite a lot of stuff in digitized and connected, nothing in smart. That was last year. Look how it's changed, though, in the last year. The volume of stuff happening has increased, particularly around patient engagement, not unexpected. But actually, the progression and the scale is not happening. So we're asking ourselves, really, why is that? Why is that scale not happening? And so this comes back to the survey questions. It's interesting. This, this is an extract from our, our recent voices study. Everybody in the industry agrees that ineffective use of data and tech is the biggest weakness. 
in our current systems. I'm going to skip quite quickly on these data points. The slides are available and there'll be a QR code at the end so you can enjoy afterwards at your leisure. So there's a recognized weakness, yet understandably people are under pressure to prioritize investment capital in other areas. It's the reason why they're not. Interestingly, people are agreeing, almost 60% are agreeing clinical decision-making is the most uh, needed area, followed closely by, by sorry, personalization and wider access. So the demand is definitely there. Interoperability is then also cited as key. Again, you know, lots of strides taken there, but not really being scaled. And also, um, let slide. Oh, my slides seem to have stuck. And life sciences too, as well as health systems, are calling out interoperability as something that is needed. Uh, they they would inter use the words interchangeably around collaboration and interoperability. But if you don't have interoperability, it's much harder to collaborate. So everybody is sort of saying that we need to do it, but we're not doing it. Things are getting in the way. Collaboration and interoperability is key. But not many of us are actually collaborating. You can see here on the green chart, the no collaboration, the red bars, is much more significant than the sum, moderate or the green, significant amounts of collaboration. So something is getting in the way. Uh, and so why is that? And, and something we've been saying for a while is we strongly believe it's the fact that there's a mismatch in an understanding uh, of the value proposition across the different stakeholder groups. So if we really want to invest collaboratively to move from connected to in really importantly connected, so move from digitized to connected to smart, we need that level of collaboration. We're not getting that level of collaboration because we are not agreeing on what is valuable. And if we don't agree on what is valuable, then we're not going to invest in those priority areas that we agree is valuable. So you can see there's a mismatch across the party. Even within a stakeholder group, you know, we cite clinicians here have a radically different view, maybe not understand, uh, uh, you know, maybe understandably of, of what's a priority versus health executives. So everybody is misaligned on what is needed, the type of areas are needed to be invested in to move from digital, digitized to connected to smart. So let's also turn to data because technology investments are, are, are only valuable if, of course, you have the right data. And there's a growing frustration that the wrong data is being collected um, and insights, therefore, are not being generated from that data. You know, many clinicians are saying that they don't have analytic insights about the patient pool that they're, they're, uh, they're looking after. Some are saying we're looking at the wrong data. We're looking at volume versus quality of the data. Uh, again, so it's a fragmented picture. Having said that, the good news is people are aligned on the growing recognition that the patient voice is increasingly important. I think that's a massive, massive positive, and we haven't seen that before. So maybe for people in the room who are investing in new innovation, are you really considering not only the clinical evidence, but also the patient reported evidence and outcome that your innovation is designed to deliver? Also to note, I think is really interesting that we were hung up uh, a few years ago, even post-COVID, there was still an attachment to data sharing and that being problematic. You can see here, it's not anymore. It's not if there's a clear understanding about where that data is going. So data isn't the problem. And further, patients are actually ready for more of a technology-assisted healthcare delivery. Uh, you can see... Um, Really interesting, some of these statistics, all of the four left hand side are above 60 percent, you know, want to be treated at home, really will take personalized medicine for granted, happy for a retail clinic, perhaps a pharmacy to take over some of our care, perhaps less uh, familiar, less enthusiastic, but still at 40, above 40 percent. 
for really an augmented replacement. I'm not a fan of that. I think the doctor needs to be augmented by technology as opposed to uh, technology really being the only interface that one sees. Although really interesting models now emerging in China where it's all in the virtual and AI powered. But patients, I think the point here, patients are ready for it. So what does this all mean? We've got a, a need for technology investment. We've got a misalignment of priorities. Some work that we've been piloting now, particularly between life sciences companies and payers and also life sciences companies and providers, is the increasing application of value-based frameworks that look at six different categories of value and how individual stakeholders think about the innovation, the investment, and how their innovation might meet some of these value-based uh, outcomes. So be it clinical, sort of at a more population level health effects or, or clinical measures more at the narrow uh, patient level. Is it economic? We talk a lot about the cost of care uh, needs to come down. We talk about performance and efficiency needs to go up. But what about the humanistic, the, the societal impacts, but more importantly, the quality of the life, the patient reported outcomes? So there's a, a big uh, move now to actually value can be described in different ways. And so our call to action to try and overcome this barrier to investment and the right data flowing through that investment to ultimately get to a be better patient reported outcome is to adopt these value-based frameworks, to look at value in these six access. Um, when we're um, actually undergoing these discussions, we find it helpful to, to do, use such a framework that looks at not only the outcome measures, but all the value drivers. And it's really apparent that, you know, payers, providers, patients, life sciences companies and regulators sometimes have a high alignment to different outcome measures depending on the investment. And some of them have a lower alignment to those outcome measures. But holistically, one can evaluate across collaborations with individual stakeholders that if there's a more green than red across a, a value-based framework, then ultimately it's a right thing to do. And this might well give us the mechanism, it's early days, but we're seeing tremendous progress, giving us the mechanism to start collaborating across stakeholder groups, across organizations, to make that critical leap from that digitized to connected, to really take us on the journey to smart. And of course, you know, I can talk uh, for, forever on the uh, the the excellence of smart and the prescriptive rather than predictive use of data, but ultimately, you know, unless we start collaborating around those investments, unless we start really having some harmony and some alignment on what is value, uh, perhaps for another stakeholder group as well as our own, we're just not going to make that step. So to close, I'd really encourage all to really believe in the reality that it's here. It's a possibility, the intelligent, smart health ecosystem. But enable, enable for us to get there, we need to trust that partnerships are mutually reinforcing. We can only do that if we align on value and collaborate. And we balance investments across those six outcome measures, two in the clinical, two in the humanistic, and two in the economic uh, spaces of value drivers. So I'll pause there. Um, I mentioned there's a, a full report. Uh, you can look at the data points in more detail, the graphs I shared. There are some more which uh, further co uh, corroborate the, the, uh, the debate. So please do scan the QR code to get access to, uh, I say, the full report uh, where, where the discussion goes into some detail. And, and on that note, I'll hand back to you, Morgan, for questions.